Hey everyone, uh, Mr. Smith here. Uh, today we're learning more about continuous probability distributions and specifically we're looking at the normal or symmetric distribution in a lot more detail. So let's get started. So I've got a bit of a calling it a motivation problem, although it's going to transition into being um, the problem that we're the the the, the data that we're going to learn some new things with today as well. Um, we'll be so we'll be working with this one for the next twenty or thirty minutes or so. Um, so here we have forty aircraft participating in a spot landing contest. So they try to land as close to a target line as possible, and then we've got the touchdown position of each of the aircraft. Um, and as we talked about in our last lesson, um, just by looking at the data, it's hard to make any conclusions and see how it's distributed. Um, however, we maybe think that um, you know there might be some kind of average landing position. Some people shoot too far. Some people don't uh, uh, get as close. Um, and it might be some kind of symmetric distribution. So we are going to try to verify that by making a frequency histogram, frequency polygon, and see if it's somewhat normally distributed. So you can pause the video and uh, make um, a histogram. I think you might have to add one more uh, below. Um, and I've chosen to, instead of saying eight to 10, 10 to 12, and having square brackets, close brackets, I've said go eight to 9.9, .9, 10 to 11.9. So this is just another way to make sure you don't include um, a certain number in two intervals. Um, so I'll let you guys make your uh, histogram. And uh, when you're ready, you can, I've got the, I've got it done on the next slide here. So here we go. So um, it certainly looks reasonably like a normal distribution. There's a little uptick around 22 to 24. Um, um, but you know, we've got kind of some central values and it kind of symmetrically slopes off to the left and right. It's not perfectly symmetrical, but like that's real life, right? Nothing is going to be perfectly symmetrical, but it certainly looks like we could model this using a normal distribution. So it's not, it's not crazy for us to uh, do that. I just realized in my, my solutions I have, I did use those brackets, but we should still have the, um, we should still have something, uh, similar. Yeah, because this one includes 10, and I think my previous one does not include 10. Yeah, that's right. So you know what? We Ours may differ by a tiny bit um, because of the um, how I've updated things, but they should match relatively closely. So sorry about that, but um, yeah, that's not worth, it's not worth restarting my whole video shoot for that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it is a normal distribution. And so the, the the graph is kind of centered around some kind of mean, and it's you know symmetrically spreads out after that. Well, what is the mean, and how spread out is it? Let's calculate the mean and standard deviation for this sample. Um, uh, you could sh I've actually just asked you to maybe try using technology. It'd be a bit impractical to crank out like a standard deviation by hand for this one. Um, so uh, I've actually got this loaded into a Google Sheet right here. Um, and here we go. I just copied and pasted it from my document. And uh, it doesn't matter if they're, they don't, the data values don't have to be in one column or one row. So what we can do for the mean, so average, calculate all the values, enter 14.63. And we are doing the sample standard deviation. So that's STDEVA in Google Sheets. But 3.26. So although you should know how to calculate those by hand, at this point, um, for most of your work, like you should be using technology. It's kind of impractical to be keep on doing this by hand. Um, uh, I mean, it's expected you know how to do it. And so now you just use technology. Um, so let's go back to, so we've got this, we've got this done. So yes, our, our last lesson, we found probabilities for uh, distributions like a uniform distribution where, you know, finding areas under the curve was easy because all the areas we we're looking at were rectangles, easy to find the area of a rectangle. Um, 
how do you find the area underneath a, a normal distribution curve? It's unlike any shape we're kind of used to, right? Just just to draw roughly up. Where's my cursor? There it is. You know, a normal distribution curve looks like this kind of bell curve, right? Big hump in the middle, slopes off symmetrically. We don't have any tidy formulas we can use for the area underneath this one. We know that the area underneath it will be one, but how do you say find the area of like this little tail? Um, it's not obvious. Um, it doesn't involve Z scores though. So if you recall, we did touch on Z scores when we did learn about standard deviation. Uh, the Z score was the number of standard deviations the value was above or below the mean. So a Z score could be negative or positive, depending if the value is below or above the mean. Um, and it could be zero if the data value is on the mean. So if you recall, using that definition, the formula would be if you want to find out how many standard deviations something is from the mean, you find its deviation from the mean. So X minus X bar. And then to find the number of standard deviations, you divide by the standard deviation. Um, you know, I'll say if you're given a set of population data, you could use that's just that's the exact same formula. That's a sigma, uh, by the way, not a six. Um, but yeah, that's just our, our population mean or population standard deviation. So a pilot who lands her plane at a position of 15.5, what would the Z score be? So Z, sometimes I like to use a little subscript. So this is the Z, because we'll be doing a lot of Z scores today. So 15.5 is the data value. The mean 14.63. And the standard deviation was 3.26. So you grab your calculator, hammer that out. 15.5 minus 14.63 divided by 3.26. And we'll be taking our Z scores to two decimal places today. So 0 0.27. This pilot's position is 0.27 standard deviations above the mean. Uh, you try it for D, for a pilot who lands at 12.2. So that's below the mean. So we're expecting a negative Z score. So 12.2 minus 14.63 divided by 3.26 minus 14.63 divided by 3.26. Just careful, make sure you do the subtraction first, get an answer and then divide. So you should be getting these Z scores. If you're not getting the same Z scores as me, what you're probably doing is you're punching it in and it's doing the division first and then subtracting. You don't want that. You want it to do the subtraction, get an answer and divide. So this pilot is about three quarters or 0.75 standard deviations below the mean. Um, okay, so we've reviewed what a z-score is and how to calculate z-scores. So let's get into how we can use these to find probabilities, areas under a normal distribution curve. So we're gonna find the probability that some random pilot lands at a position of 18.3 meters or less. So to visualize that, our mean was, 14.63. So if you want to have it on there, we're looking at 18.3 and 18.3 meters or less. So we're concerned with all of this region. Okay. So we know it's going to be more than 50%, right? Because that's like obviously it's half, like the, to the left of our normal distribution is 50%. And then, but we don't know this little bit in here. Uh, a little uh, aside. Right now, we're finding the probability that a random pilot has a landing position uh, 18.3 meters or less. This would be the exact same as if I asked for the position of, uh, or the probability that it would be just less than 18.3. Because remember, for continuous distributions, we can only find a range of values. The probability of getting an exact value That's just like one specific value out of infinitely many possibilities, right? So it's basically zero. So that's why these two are equivalent. So when setting up a problem, it generally doesn't matter whether you include the value or don't include the value. Um, all right. Um, so 
how do we find the error in this curve? Well, I mean, it's not a, a normal shape we work with all the time. It can be very difficult. Um, so instead, we're going to use a table of pre-calculated probabilities, pre-calculated areas for any z-score. Um, the cool thing about normal distributions are it doesn't matter what the mean and standard deviation are. Every normal distribution looks the same in terms of z-scores. You have a certain percentage of the um, of the values within one standard deviation of the mean. And it's the same for all normal distributions. So we kind of standardize our distribution by finding the z-score. And mathematicians have calculated these probabilities for uh, many z-scores. Um, we actually have a table that we're going to use with pre-calculated probabilities, which I'm going to show you right now, I believe. And then I'll come back to our solution. So this is the document I've given you. Um, so in this table, given a certain z-score, you are going to you can use that z-score, look up a value in the table, and that gives you this area of the uh, gives you the area underneath the curve for anything less than that z-score. So for example, my, let's just I'm just randomly picking one. Let's do this one. Uh, let's do minus two point six. So let's say you had a problem, and uh, you're, maybe you're doing a pilot question. And for a certain data value, you know its z-score is negative 2.62. If you want to find the area under the curve for values less than that z-score, you look up negative 2.6. You go over to the 0.2 column. So that would be negative 2.62. And that's your answer. It's the probability of a z-score being less than negative 2.62 is 0.0044 or 0.44%. So th this table just gives you the probability. You just look it up. Um, uh, most um, like graphing calculators, um, there's, a, there's a, a ton of online um, options as well that I might uh, share with you in the next couple of days. Uh, that can do this if you just punch in what your data value is, mean standard deviation, it'll spit out a probability. Um, but I do need you guys to be able to use a table. And this is the table that you know most um, introductory stats courses would, would use. Um, so let's talk about how we do that with our problem. Um, so we are looking for the probability. Well, first of all, um, something that you should be doing automatically is, you know, for any of these problems, you're given a value, find a z-score. You'll probably be sick of doing z-scores today. 18.3 minus 14.63 divided by 3.26. Sorry, somebody just opened the basement door upstairs, so you're probably hearing my family and my wife on the phone. That's okay. 3.26. So I get a z-score of 1.13 if we round that to two decimal places. So here's how we set this up. The probability that our pilot's um, landing position is less than 18.3 is the same as the probability that its z-score is less than or equal to 1.13. And this, we can look up from our table. So here's your task, guys. Go to your table, find the z-score of 1.13, look up the probability, and that's our answer. So I have that at home. It's just a bit impractical to flip flop back and forth between a table. Um, so give it a try. Uh, I'm going to look it up too. And I might have it open, but you guys can pause the video. It takes... There's a bit of a learning curve, but you'll get pretty quick at doing this. I wonder if I have it open. Um, I do have it open. So you can unpause with me. We're looking for a z-score of 1.13. So on the positive side, here's 1.1, going over to 1.13.8708. 0 0.8708, that's our answer or if you prefer, 87.08%, and we're done. 
Um, I think that's pretty cool that we can find these areas so quickly and efficiently. And we're standing on the shoulders of the people that made these tables for us. Um, so uh, what we need to get, get uh, we need to do today, guys, is get really comfortable setting these problems up and getting comfortable using our standard normal distribution table. When we're when we've had some practice in the future, we might just use a technology to do these probabilities a little bit more quickly, but we need some practice. So um, let's do another problem. Um, we've gone through this table. So what about uh, the probability that a, a pilot lands at a position more than 18.3? So just, and I would encourage you guys for every problem, just draw, draw a rough, a rough sketch. 18.3, and this time we're looking for this region here, right? Well, that's 18.3. So it's a greater than problem, a more than problem. So how can we solve these kinds of questions? Because your table only gives you less than probabilities. Well, we make use of the fact that the area underneath the curve is one, right? We're gonna make use of that. now. We already use, we've already found the z-score for 18.3. We don't need to recalculate that. It was 1.13. So here's how you can write out your solution. The probability that a value is greater than 18.3 is the same as the probability that a z-score is greater than 1.13. How can you get greater probabilities using your table? Well, you find the probability that it's less than that, and you subtract from 1. And notice I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm freewheeling a little bit with my not putting the equal signs, but again, that doesn't matter, right? Um, now this value we do know, we looked it up 0 0.8708. I think it was 8.8708, uh, yep. And we're done. We just have to do that subtraction. One minus 0 0.8708, 0 0.1292 or 12.92%. So to do any, with the normal distribution, any problem that's a greater than or more than question, you're gonna be looking up your, your z-score probability and taking it away from one, because we know the area underneath any curve is one. Now I've shown a ton of work for this. You might be able to, um, you know, you might just be able to say, okay, I know I look up the probability, take away from one, and you might just be able to go to this step, right? That's okay with me. You should probably show a little bit of work, but until you're really comfortable, maybe you want to keep using the Z square notation. Um, I might, I'm going to keep using it for the next few examples we do. So we've done a less than question. We've done a greater than question. In this part, we're going to find the probability that a pilot lands between 12.2 and 18.3 meters. So 18.3. 12.2 is somewhere below our mean. I don't know how far below. This is just a rough sketch. And now we're looking for the region in here, right? And so how do we do in a range of values, in between values? How can we use our table to do that? So what we do need the Z scores for these guys. And I'll just do that off the side here. Z18.3 was 1.13. I'm wondering, did we do 12.2 earlier? Uh, yes, we did. Negative, point, uh, negative 0.75. I knew there was a reason I chose those values. Z12.2 equals negative 0.75. So how can we set these up? So we're looking for the probability that uh, our variable, the landing distance, is between 18 or 12.2 and 18.3. And this is the way we can write that. 12.2 is less than X is less than 18.3. This is the same as the probability that our Z scores are between negative 0.75, uh, that should be Z, and 1.13. So how do we find this using our table? Well, the, we, the key is we use subtraction. If we look up the Z score for 1.13, it gives us everything less than 1.13, including this tail that we don't want. If you look up the Z score for negative, or the probability for negative 0.75 Z score, that gives you this tail region. So if we subtracted the two, we would get the area left in the middle, right? Again, if we took that, this, maybe I'll just take this green here. If we took 
all of this green area and subtracted this red area, we'd get the blue area that we want. So uh, what we do is we look up our numbers and we subtract them. So we've actually got the one for 1.13. We've used it a couple times. It was 0 0.8708. And you know what? I'm actually going to sh show an extra step here just because this is the first time that some of you guys have used this before. So I want to make sure I'm really clear and then let you choose. If you want to shave some steps off, then you can do that. So we're looking up that probability and we're going to subtract the probability that Z is less than negative 0.75. We've already looked this one up, 0.8708. Can you guys take a pause? Look up the z-score for negative 0.75. Or follow with me as I do the same thing. Negative, so we should be in the negatives. Negative 0.7, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, just being careful, yep. That is 0 0.2266. If you got that, good for you. And we just subtract these two decimals now. It's 0.6442 or 64.42%. So for solving a between question, a range of values, you just look up the two Z scores, look up the probabilities and subtract them. So those are the three types of questions you guys should be able to do. A less than, a greater than, where you take away from one, and an in-between, where you subtract the two probabilities. Why don't you try it? So uh, I've given you guys a new scenario here. So we've got a population of small monkeys. Um, their height is only 25 centimeters, so they are very small, with a standard deviation of 5 centimeters. And we're going to assume the heights are normally distributed. So I've given you, for each part of these, I've given you a little visual of that. Um, so uh, in A, you're doing a less than question. In B, you're doing a between question. In C, a more than question. And then I'll help you out with D. But you guys can try A, B, and C. Find the Z-score, find the probability in your table, and use that. Um, so if you want to pause and do all three, or pause and do one at a time and unpause, that's great. Um, I'm going to start doing them. Uh, if you just want to follow along with me, that's great too. So uh, automatically, first step, Got to find the z-score for 18. Z18, I take my value, I subtract the mean, I divide by my standard deviation. Uh, that's negative 7 divided by 5, that is negative 1.4, or negative 1.40, if that helps you look up the uh, probability. So the probability that the height is less than 18, that's the same as the probability that the z-score is less than negative 1.40, which we can look up at our table and we will be done. Negative 1.40.0808. And if you like with the percentages, 8.08%, .08%, multiply that by 100. So less than problem, I maybe want to draw that. Here's 18 right there. We found this region here, 8.08%. Um, it's going to be a uh, height between 32 and 35. So this little sliver right in here. So I sh we shouldn't get a terribly big number. We will need those Z scores. So Z32, we'll be doing 32 minus 25 over 5. That's positive 1.4. The Z score for 35, maybe you can even just do the mental math or look at the diagram. It's exactly 2, 35 minus 25 over 5. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> two standard deviations. So the probability that our height is between 32 and 35 is the probability that our Z scores are between 1.4 and two, we get that probability by finding the probability for a z-score of two and subtracting the probability that is a, for the z-score being less than 
uh, those two things we will can look up. So 2, 2.0, 2 1.4.9192. And then we subtract those two guys. 0 0.058 or 5.8%. Now again, I've shown a lot of work here. You guys um, will probably want to show your work for the Z scores. Um, maybe um, maybe you're comfortable going from, you know, setting this up and going right to here. Like, you know, you just look up the bigger Z score, subtract the smaller Z score. I'll leave that up to you. Show as much work as you need to to feel comfortable. Okay, uh, a greater than question. So we're doing 14. So 14 is here, greater than. So we're expecting to get a pretty large answer, maybe even more than 90%. We'll see. Uh, Z score for 14. 14 minus 25 over 5, that's negative 11 divided by 5, that's negative 2.2. Probability that our height, our variable, is above 14 is the same as the probability that our Z score is above negative 2.2. And remember, we get greater than probabilities by taking 1 and subtracting what the table gives us, the less than probability. And let's look this up. So 2.2 .2, uh, negative uh, 0.0139. And 1 minus 0 0.0139, 0 0.9861, or 98.61%. All right, um, hopefully you did well on those. Those are the three basic types of questions you should be able to do after our lesson. A less than question, a greater than question, and in between by finding Z-scores and using your table. So we've got a bit of practice. Hopefully you're feeling more comfortable. Um, one last type of question we can do, and we'll be relying on this later, um, is given a probability, can we look up a, can we get a value? Can we work backwards from the table? So let's do part D together. So biologists studying these monkeys want to keep track of monkeys that are very small. And they want to tag monkeys that are in, that are in the bottom 5% of the population. Now, we don't know what that value is, right? So I'm just going to – I don't know if it's around 15. I'm just – this is just a rough. So we're, we want to know what Z score or what value gets us 5% for this region. So what X value or what Z value, so we can find X, what Z value gives us 5% in our table? So I might just pose this question. What Z score, score gives P um, that Z is uh, less than blank equal to five percent or point zero five zero zero as close as we can so i'd like you guys to go hunting can you go into your table find a probability as close to five percent as you can what z score does that correspond to or if there's a tie maybe we can find the average so can you guys maybe want to pause that dig in your table can you find a z score close to five percent unpause when you're ready i'm going to do that right now so here we go so it is in the negative region and I'm seeing, uh, so we've got 0 0.5, 0 0.0505, 0 .0505 and 0 0.0495. So it's a tie between negative 1.64 and 1.65. So flipping back, what you can do is the following. You could say the average. So that is a negative 1.645, the average in between. Honestly, if you use negative 0.164 or negative 1.65, you'd probably get we'd probably get reasonably the same answer anyway. But in this case, if there's a tie, you can kind of average them. So you guys should also be able to work backwards, given a probability or percentage, work backwards. So we've got our Z score now. So what height is that though? What height corresponds to a Z score of negative 1.645? I don't want to use trial and error. Let's use our Z-score formula. So um, I've given you a hint there, but I'm going to show you guys where that hint comes from. 
Remember to find our z-score, we do x minus x bar divided by the standard deviation. What if you were given z and wanted to find x? Well, how do you get at that x? Well, you'd multiply up the s, so you've had, you would have s times z, and then you'd add x bar to the other side using opposite operations. And we get re this rearranged formula to get the data value, you take the mean, and you t multiply by the z-score times the standard deviation. And so we know all those, all those things. The mean is 25, standard deviation is 5, and our z-score is negative 1.645. So let us do this, and we'll find what height um, is the cutoff so that we should be tagging monkeys that are smaller than this height. So 25 minus 5 times uh, 1.645. So I'm just going to leave this as exact. 16.775 centimeters. So any monkey that's height is less than that is in the bottom 5%. Or in terms of percentiles, this would be the fifth percentile, right? 5% of the data values would be below or equal to this, thinking back to the last unit. Um, so that's the height. That's the cutoff height. So this is the fourth type of problem you should be able to do. It's a little trickier, but it's not so bad. Given a probability, look up the z-score and use this rearranged formula to get a specific value. So it's kind of working backwards. All right, everyone. I really enjoyed that uh, lesson today, sharing my, that with you guys. I think normal distribution stuff is kind of cool. Um, your next steps, um, you want to get better using your standard normal distribution table. You want to get really comfortable so that you can just do these really quickly and efficiently. I've given you a PDF of practice questions. They're not from the standard text that I usually use. Um, uh, so this has uh, just some basic problems, a couple application problems, but for the most part, you're just using your table, getting practice. I um, uh, hope you would get in touch if you need anything or need any support, as usual. Um, hope you guys stay well, and we'll see you soon.